Hello and welcome. I'm Ahmed al -Duri, and here are some of the tools I use while doing art. Now, the links for all that I'll talk about will be in the description below. I know someone's going to still ask, wait, what program is that? It, it's, it's in the description. God. First up, PureF. What is it? It's a free program, although you can choose to pay, donate, or support their Patreon, but it's a program for reference boards that can uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> stay on top of everything. It can be used for PC or Mac. The reason I use this is so that I can have a reference board floating separately from Photoshop, letting me be in full screen mode in Photoshop so I can zoom in and out and still have the reference in view. How does it work? So you open it up, hold right click to move the whole thing around, click and drag the corners to resize, simply drag any images you want onto the board, whatever they might be, uh, reference, blah blah blah. Hold right click to move the whole thing around, hold middle click to move within it, you can scroll to zoom in and out. You can click and drag each image to move it around, and click the corners to resize. There are a bunch of other hotkeys that let you flip, rotate, resize, align, auto-arrange, optimize the canvas, cropping, and much more. It's been really useful to have this floating reference board instead of an additional PSD file open on the side. I can now have the reference open in pure ref while having Photoshop in full screen. Here's the really cool thing about this that my friend Kev showed me. If you have a Pinterest board open, I think I have to be signed in to see the whole thing, but let's say you're signed in. Um, for some reason, it doesn't work if I'm logged into my own, uh, seeing my own boards, because it thinks I'm trying to edit the arrangement of the image. Anyway, if you just go down to here and just highlight by clicking and moving like this, if you just take that selection, drag into pure ref okay that didn't work select everything drag into pure ref you could see that it's kind of transparent there uh and let go it'll bring all the images it'll kind of find the full version actually it's not quite the full version it's slightly smaller of each image and it'll paste it right into pure ref you can zoom out middle click to move around control alt left or right left will make everything the same um height and then control right will make everything the same width I believe. Yeah. I like to use the height one and then hit control P. It'll auto arrange them. I'll hit control left, down, left, up. It's kind of like Tetris um, until it's just arranged in such a way that I like. And I could put this here, select all again and align it. Really cool. I believe you can also just paste a URL into PureRef and it will download all the images of that page into PureRef. Uh, you'll have to test that one. It doesn't really work with Pinterest because Pinterest, you have to scroll down to let all the images show up. Another option for a very similar reference board is Miro. I haven't tried this yet, but it was also recommended to me by Kev. Apparently this one lets you add videos and such, so you can share the board with other people. But for me, PureRef has done the job thus far for what I need. Next up is gesture drawing. Drawing from observation is important. It sharpens your ability to see gesture, shape relationships, measurements, proportions, lighting, all things from the universe that inform our studies and understanding within our art field. It's very necessary to practice in order to strengthen your skill set. When we don't have the option to go to a real life drawing session, the gesture drawing app is super useful. So gesture drawing, it's not free, but worth the price. It pulls images from any folder you choose and shuffles with a timer. You can set it to different intervals and this simulates a timed life drawing session. It's great for me because I usually have a hard time picking which images to draw. So just picking a folder and letting the RNG decide for me is nice. I'll just select this folder of ballet references from Graffiti Studios and click Let's Draw and it will randomize the images from that folder. You can also turn on and off the grid, uh, disable grid. You could pause, you can go next, you can go back. Uh, you can also just open a new folder if you don't like this particular folder. There's also a class option that starts with fast drawings and builds up to longer timed ones. I use this a lot when warming up early in the day. I open one of these reference packs from Graffiti Studios and overall it's a great program for running a drawing session. Next up is Anatomy 360. What is it? It's a program that has full body photo scans of different people in different poses, clothed as well as not clothed. Each model pack is a standalone program and I believe they are criminally cheap. I think they're around 10 to $15 per pack of uh, poses and body scans. The Skull one is free if you sign, sign up with your email. What makes this program amazing is the ability to change the lighting angle. But not just the lighting angle, the rim light. I think you hold, wait, it's one of these. Rim light angle. Uh, you can change the color of the light and the rim light and the background color to whatever you want. Amazing. 
and you can, you know, of course, change the intensity of things. Um, you can add um, different effects like this, or you can mess around with the presets that they already have. Black and white, sci-fi, blue light, of course, R just rim light, very photographic, and it looks real. Like, of course, if you zoom in, you'll see that there's uh, polygons and whatnot, but it's great otherwise. You can see the silhouette, change the pose, or you can make it look sketched to kind of see the outline and contour. You could hit clay, or just ambient local value and local color. So the question is, what would I use this for? Well, it's great to set up your own camera angles, lighting, and color on the figures as reference for your own projects. You can set up cinematic angles and use them as reference for storyboards, keyframes, illustrations, really anything. I think there's a option for field of view somewhere and a vertical slice. Crazy. What's great about this is that they're scans of real people, so the subtleties of real life are not entirely lost. The only negative thing I can say about this program is that the camera controls take some getting used to. It would be nice if they adopted the controls of Blender or some, you know, popular 3D program. While you can certainly learn a lot about anatomy by studying and analyzing muscles from different angles, for example, in the, the anatomy packs, but there's another program I'd suggest for actual in-depth 3D construction of anatomy, and that is called Complete Anatomy. Let's go to the homepage. Thanks to Alice Walsh, Scout Rager, for the recommendation. This isn't free either, but there is a three-day trial, and it's intended for medical students, which means it has to be quite accurate, and we as artists get to benefit from that. If you want a three-day trial, you just have to sign up with your email and follow the installation instructions. This program lets you start off with the skeleton model and gradually add layers of muscles layer by layer. And this is much easier to navigate the camera than the previous program. You keep adding muscle layers to kind of see the insertion and origin points of each muscle if you want to see how things actually work. And you could put it at any angle, you could zoom in, figure out what's actually happening with the triceps there. Um, what is this muscle, right? And once you click one, it'll show you the description of them. You know, this is the brachialis, biceps, that's the long head, you have the short head. And if you want to see where it's actually connecting to, you turn off that layer. The bicep connects to the same part as the crocobrachialis. Then the other bicep goes over the humerus there. Anyway, uh, don't want to get tuned up into that but useful things to know especially if you're rigging a character model and you want to figure out how the flexing and contraction works with muscles and why you know why they're connected here and there this is really useful if you're trying to understand how muscles actually layer the level of detail is pretty great there's even an option to look at the rib cage and pelvis of a female human skeleton and muscular structure since those are distinct from the male skeleton uh, it's really useful to study these differences in width and subtleties as it will help you understand the underlying reasons for anatomical differences on the surface between male and female. The next tool I'd like to share is called JustSketch.me. M-E? Me. There's a free version, and if you want the extra goodies, feel free to use my affiliate link in the description. So, what is it? Well, first we covered drawing poses from reference, both 2D and 3D. We covered analytical anatomy, looking at the muscles, but what if you want to make up your own poses? That's what this is for. It's actually really easy to use and works on all of your devices. I tried this on my iPhone. It was great. I came up with a bunch of uh, poses for Mermaid. And you just click different things, rotate the model, uh, click over here, move the arm, so on and so forth. There's also different models. Uh, female. Oh, that adds one. Okay, you can also trash the model in, include a male and by doing this you can actually set up a whole scene and uh, have them interact with uh, shapes and props there's even an anime proportion uh, body set realistic let's see muscular male realistic uh, so on and so forth and I believe this does not come with the free version there's also a dog look at the dog this is another great way for laying down the building blocks for anything as reference for storyboards, comics, manga, illustration, concept art, splash art, whatever. The final thing is something that I've seen a lot of other artists on my Patreon Discord use, and it's called Back to Work. Basically, it's a timer that keeps track of how much time you're actually spending in a program like Photoshop. It turns red when you tab out, 
so it stops counting. This gives you an idea of how much time you're actually putting into your own work. The work here on the screen is by Robbie Aldis. So you might spend an hour on something, but with the amount of multitasking, alt-tabbing, putting on music and such, you might find only 30 minutes or so were spent actually painting or drawing. It's just an additional tool to help you keep track of productivity. Well, that wraps it up for now. Hope you found these tools to be useful. I certainly do. And again, the links are all in the description below. Check them out and see for yourself. In other news, Lightbox will be coming up from the 11th to the 13th of September. That is next weekend. And I will be participating in it by streaming live. I'll be doing a choose your own adventure kind of character design where the audience and chat gets to vote for attributes of the character that I'm designing. Be sure to check out lightboxexpo.com. It's only a dollar to sign up to be a part of all the fun. So something new I want to do, we reached the end of the video, so I'll be showing a random artist feature from artists I come across or that I like. Here is, I think, Flore Lemoy, Lemoy? I'm so sorry, uh, but beautiful artwork. I love the uh, design sense, the colorful quality of everything. Really good shape language. There's also concept art. Ah, I love the shapes on this. Really cool. The link is in the description for that as well. If you want to support this channel, feel free to stop by my Patreon page. I no longer make tutorial content there, but it gives access to my Patreon Discord as well as occasional artwork that I post. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and leave a like. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.